Right, these are the necklaces that I've just made. Remember we made um, these squeezed papier mache air dried clay beads, which then I soaked in resin, and also the little Tyvek and iridescent beads. Can you see now? And I've put glass beads, medium, large, medium, in between each link, like that. And I've, at the top, I've just, I've used bronze bugle beads because that's what I had and the silver ones haven't arrived yet, but it doesn't really matter. I think that looks rather nice. So I think that comes down just to there. That's, I'm really pleased with that. And it shows off the iridescent, iridescence, iridescence, iridescence really prettily. So that's one. Um, then I went on the River Thames and collected um, little bits of fragments of clay pipe and I've, I've bleached them, washed them and cleaned them inside out and again I've linked them with this time with the iridescent Tyvek so that I've played against the nice matte old bits of clay pipe from the River Thames which have come from Victorian days way back into the 1600s and before so they've all got a little bit of history. I think they're just really charming. And again, that sort of, I like them at this length. I think they're really nice. I've done another one with the, a longer one even, sort of a bit more sort of 1920s style, which is just glass beads with clay pipe. Again, can't really see there. Aren't they lovely? Because they let the light through in certain places, not in others. And then um, I suppose my favourite is this one because it's the little bits of clay pipe from the River Thames which have been in the silt for centuries and have absorbed something of the grey blueness of it all. And I've put them on tiny little um, beads I bought in Covent Garden. They, they pick up the sort of... Um, matte effect that goes with it um, and they've they just hold it all together very prettily so that is my favorite I think how about that it's pretty isn't it yes very pleased anyhow yesterday I took Bella down to a very pebbly beach for a walk at low tide and I remember the beach from oh 20-30 years ago I used to go I mean, as you do as a child and as a teenager and as somebody in my 20s and 30s, always looking for little stones. And this time I had in mind to get a selection of stones. I've set them on with gaffer tape so you can see them. And what I'm going to do is make, I'll take one off like that. Take off the gaffer tape. This is the silly gum that I keep talking about. So I'm going to take a lump of silly gum, so probably not quite that much, and a lump of silly gum of the white stuff. The idea is to have it into two equal sized balls, like that. And then I roll them together so that they become marbled. And you keep on doing this until they're completely one nice mixed up pale blue with no marbly streaks of white in it so that's doesn't take very long and it heats up the catalyst heats up and gets warmer and warmer so how's that yeah perfect and then what I'm going to do is press it onto a sheet of glass like this I'm going to take my pebble and stick it. Actually, what I will do is I'll turn it over so the flat side is on top. Then press it in. Like so. I think I've got one of these little things which I'm going to just roll across the top and see if that helps. doesn't make the slightest bit of difference, so I'll just press it down with my fingers. There, and I'll leave that now to go hard. See? 
and it takes a few minutes. This is one I did earlier on. This is from the one from the middle. And I've already made an impression with the um, Raya, I use Raya papier mache air dry clay, but any one will do. So I made my mould and I ran a kebab stick through it, which I'd already <coughs> sorry, um, put a, a drinking straw on top of, which means that when it goes through the middle like that, it doesn't stick. It also means that when I soak it in resin, the resin won't stick to the kebab stick, which is always a good point. And then I shall start to build up the necklace and show you what happens next. One of the other things that I, I did do was I made up some of the um, of rings like this. So I took the impression of um, the bottle brush. Just going to lean over and get it there. That was the original bottle brush. I how did I put it? Oh here. I made a. An impression with it out of the silly gum and then I made <clears throat> lots and lots of impressions with the air dried clay. This is just a tiny little fragment of that which I then rolled over one of the rings I made. So that's that stage so far. It's nice isn't it? Just white. But I'm going to gild it up and make it fit in with this is the pendant which I have just put one coat of resin on top of because resin will make things incredibly shiny but that is just lovely because it's just soaked in and it's got a sort of um, a slightly shiny but mainly matte quality and the idea with the resin is I don't know if you can see it just soaks into the clay at the back it makes it really really hard. Um, what I'm going to do now is put some milliput. This is the it's, a, it's another um, epoxy moulding thing but it, it, I thought it came in a blue and a white but actually the, the blue isn't blue it is it is it is white and I believe this is their finest grade. It's a bit hard to work with compared with the, um, the silly gum but what I did earlier on was I mixed them up last night as I was making bracelets with modrock and water around this is ice cream but yogurt pops and things like that and then last night I just started to wrap it around quite roughly like that and I found that by working underwater not underwater but with dipping my fingers in water and smoothing it it makes it a lot easier to work with and you can get quite a nice smooth finish. Now today I'm going to add more milli gum and be awake because <laughs> I went to bed after I did it so it all dried out overnight but if I'm kind of watching it over the next two or three hours it will get to a point where it's just nice and sticky and tacky and where I can press in. Um, when I was doing my mudlarking log I came across lots of tiny little bits of mother of pearl I've got some lovely tiny fragments. I've also got um, lots of fragments of bits of pottery which I found not only on um, the foreshore but also over at Hampstead on the Heath. It's a great place because mounds and mounds of stuff were dumped there in Victorian days and after the rain it, you, you can find it. Just follow the trail of tiny little bits of pottery and marbles and clay pipes and treasures await you to be transformed into 21st century contemporary jewellery and a lot of fun making it. So I'll get back to you when I've gone a little further. So do 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 have a go at these. Squeak, you know they'll find them on the videos. The Tyvek beads and the papier-mâché air-dried clay. At this point you can go off into hundreds of different directions. So hope you can follow the videos. See you later.